And now for the New Testament reading from Ephesians 2, verses 11 and 12. It's titled, One in Christ. Therefore remember that at one time you Gentiles in the flesh called the uncircumcision by what is called the circumcision, which is made in the flesh by hands. Remember that you were at that time separated from Christ, alienated from the commonwealth of Israel, and strangers to the covenants of promise, having no hope and without God in the world. But now in Jesus Christ, you who once were off have been brought near the blood of Christ. For he himself is our peace, who has made us both one and has broken down in his flesh the dividing wall of hostility by abolishing the law of commandments expressed in ordinances, that he might create in himself one new man in place of two, so making peace and might reconcile us both to God in one body through the cross, thereby killing hostility. And he came and preached peace to you who were far off and peace who, to those who were near. And through him, we both have access in one spirit to the Father. So then you are no longer strangers and aliens, but you are fellow citizens with the saints and members of the household of God, built on the foundation of the apostles and prophets, Christ Jesus himself being the cornerstone, in whom the whole structure being joined together grows into a holy temple in the Lord. In him, you are also being built together into a dwelling place for God by the Spirit. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Breaking down the wall. Paul's third missionary journey found him in Ephesus. The city was famous for its beautiful temple, which had been de dedicated to the beautiful pagan goddess named Diana. It's generally considered to be one of the seven wonders of the ancient world, as it was the epicenter of worship for Rome's various Greek and Roman gods. Roman gods. Paul had many missionary followers who were active in his ministry while he lived there for three years. Years later, during his imprisonment in Caesarea, he wrote this letter to Ephesus. He wrote the letter to Ephesians to encourage unity within their church. Paul begins the letter by praising God for his magnificent blessings. Not only for his, but for everyone. For all believers in Christ. He reveals the astonishing truth that God chose Gentile believers to be part of his family before creation was even made. God's purpose has always been to unify people, creation, animals, and stars. All things in heaven and earth under Christ. And I believe that the Creator's plan was also to have a huge family. A family through his son, Jesus Christ. He proclaims a life-altering truth here. God's love extends to all, offering adoption into his family. Christ's life, death, and resurrection bridges the gaps between Gentiles and Jews, finally. Ephesians 2, 1 through 10 says the believers were physically and spiritually dead. They were brought to life by God's grace through Jesus Christ. So Paul is reminding them of their former separation from God and the dividing wall that was placed between them, between them and God. 
When they decided to follow Jesus' teachings, they then became part of a new spiritual together, one that was unified. Thankfully, the Apostle Paul places reconciliation at the heart of our scripture today. He reminds the Ephesians that they were once estranged from God as well. For we all know that the Gentiles were not part of the covenant family of Abraham. They were not part of that bloodline. We were not part of that bloodline. But Christ's sacrifice broke down the dividing wall that stood between the Jews and the Gentiles. Jesus' sacrifice unites them as one body. And Paul wants to remind them that one body means they are one church. The concept of unity is a major theme throughout the letter. Christ's power demolished the barrier that separated them. The Gentiles are no longer alienated from the Jews or alienated from God, but now they are together with God. They are reconciled to Jesus. Reconciled means that we once were estranged from God because of our sin, but Jesus has now brought us all back together because he took on the sins of the world. Dr. Wayne Grumden, a renowned New Testament scholar, theologian, and author, and a seminary professor of theology and biblical studies at Phoenix Seminary, defines the term. He says reconciliation signifies the removal of enmity and the restoration of fellowship, fellowship between two parties. I'll get there, guys. Grumden understands that humanity's renewed connection with God and the possibility of forging a deeper and more meaningful connection extends between one another. Jesus, the sacrificial lamb, took on the weight of everyone's transgressions, acting as the bridge that allows one to re-enter into the fellowship of the divine because we were without the fellowship as Gentiles. Believers in Christ experience the joy and blessing of reconciliation and in turn become beacons of light, guiding others to reconciliation. Yet we were not mere tools of light, but we are disciples of Christ. We have been enlisted, we've been called and equipped to mend and repair damaged and broken relationships. Our mission extends beyond Christ. We are called to bridge canyons of despair and foster between enemies, to foster peace. The whole message of reconciliation is centered around God and the death of Jesus Christ. Paul urges us, each one of us, to confront the stark reality of our existence before Christ. Our relationship was broken Sin severed us from God's grace. The barrier between Jew and Gentile needed to crumble, not just for Gentiles, but for all of humanity. Apostle Paul's message is a wake-up call, a stark reminder of the transformation that we receive through Christ. The Bible's enduring truths and Christ's unwavering love become our anchor. In life's fiercest storms. And as the Apostle Paul reminds us to be powerful witnesses for Christ, we must remember our past. It's imperative to remember our time individually without Christ. Because our hope extends beyond our individual salvation. We move forward in hope united by the magnificent promise of becoming one in Christ. A beacon of love and hope, not for just the church, but for the world. Unity shatters the walls that confine us. And as one people in Christ, we can dismantle the barriers that limit our ability to embrace everyone into the kingdom. For the Jews did not want the Gentiles in their kingdom. But Ephesians 2.13 says, Now in Christ, you who were once far off have been brought near by the blood of Christ. 
Christ's sacrifice became the bridge. It dismantled the walls between us. You know, God created diversity when the world was formed, and yet all were welcomed into the embrace of his love. And together we celebrate the vibrant riches and the richness of our diversity. Together we can experience the warmth of a divine family with God as our father and Jesus as our brother. And Paul paints a powerful picture of reconciliation in this letter to the Ephesians. For the blood of Christ, which was symbolized by his physical presence, now becomes a bridge that unifies us with God. The cross is the leveler. When Jesus died on the cross, the curtain of the temple was born in two, was torn. Matthew, Mark, and Luke report this event. Matthew says, and behold, the curtain of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom. The earth shook and the rocks were split. There's meaning in that. Reconciliation came through Jesus' death and made the temple and the sacrificial system obsolete. Aren't you glad we don't have to sacrifice things anymore? The temple was a place where the law of Moses and the sacrificing of animals was carried out. The veil was symbolic of a separation between the divine, the holy, in the sacred and the sanctified place called the holy of holies. So guess what? If you were not holy, you could not enter into the temple. Christ broke that temple down so that all could enter into the temple. The separation signifies humanity's sins and its incompatibility with God. For he is making one kingdom, says Ephesians 2.19. So then you are no longer strangers and aliens, but you are fellow citizens with the saints and members of the household of God. You're built upon the foundation of the prophets and the apostles. For Christ is the cornerstone in whom the whole structure being joined together grows into a temple of the holy for the Lord. So guess what, guys? Y'all are a temple for the Lord. Jesus opens the gate and invites us to enter into his father's kingdom. Jesus' kingdom will endure forever, for he is the cornerstone, the essential foundational stone upon which the entire structure exists. For the apostles and prophets laid this foundation and we continue joined together as a holy holy building arises, but we are still a work in progress. One at a time, we are being reconciled to God through Christ. We were not strangers, but now we are citizens. We're not just visitors now. We are full citizens with all the rights and blessings that come with our adoption through God. You know what? Praise the Lord for this wonderful work of reconciliation. Because now, through Jesus, we have a past. It's built on the foundation of the apostles and prophets. We now have a present as citizens with saints and members of the household of God. And we now have a future, one that is being built together into a holy dwelling place for God. A new chapter is waiting to be written for us. For the obstacles have been overcome, the playing field has been leveled, and we've crossed a significant hurdle. For through Christ, all hurdles have been removed. Full access has been granted to all of God's people. That means now as Gentiles, we are on the same playing field as the Jews. The impossible became possible when the veil was torn in two and laid aside. So today, I thank the Apostle Paul for this reminder, because I needed it. You know, our beloved Methodist Church broke down walls this week as well. A new expression of Methodism has emerged, one that says reconciliation has now began. But it's only begun. 
you know, I cannot say for 100% sure that the Gentiles felt the same way as the Jews because I'm sure they didn't. I'm sure that they felt hurt, left out, and probably less than the Jews, and honestly, we were. They must have felt like second-class citizens compared to the chosen people. I'm sure all of us have felt that way at one time. Amen? But I believe Paul was right when he said that we are all one in Christ. We are all reunited to him through his blood. And when we come together and when we seek unity, the impossible becomes possible. When we come together as one, God's kingdom radiates within us. And I can honestly say that knocking down walls brings freedom to my heart. And today, my friends, my heart finally is free. I want to give you a quote from Bishop Karen Olivito as she preached this week at General Conference. She says, and I quote, We cannot be the church if we choose to overlook some members of the body of Christ. If we define who we are by who we are leaving out, it begs the question, have we ever really let Christ in? I think that's what Paul is talking about when he told the Ephesians to break down the walls that are dividing and separating them, not only as people, but as the church. Amen.